And in that box was a Timex wristwatch. A six-year-old kid, a Timex wristwatch. Are you kidding me? 1966, I was six years old. And I put the wristwatch on and I read the instructions that came with it. And you know what it said in there? It said, whined every day at the same time. But I was a six-year-old, I thought the word was wind. And I was like, wind? Wind every day at the same time. To keep wristwatch for me. And I do want to ask my dad and mom, because my mom talked English and my dad, you know, would say, what do you mean, wind? So, I just stuck my wristwatch out the window in my room one morning. And it was like a little breeze, but the watch had stopped. And I didn't want to ask them, because I figured they'd blame me for breaking it. And, I, and then, I walked outside and my dad goes, Stevie, look what we got you. It's Boxing Day. And they just punched me and made it on the 26th, which were originally from Canada. And there was a beautiful three-speed Schwinn bicycle. So I thought, if I ride that bike to the top of the hill, I can hold my wrist out like this. Well, my dad hadn't finished tightening up the handlebars yet. And I took the bike to the top of the hill. We had moved from Canada to Pasadena, California. And we were living there, and I was going to St. Rita's Elementary School, and I was an altar boy. And I got on that bike, and I said a prayer. Please, God. Please, Jesus, make my wristwatch work. <laughs> and I waited for an answer from Jesus, but there was no answer, so I took matters into my own hands. And I rode that bike down the hill as fast as I could, and the handlebars went forward like this. And I was freaking out, and I couldn't stop. I was panicking. And I didn't know what to do. And then I was looking at my one wrist, I was holding it like this, and it still wasn't going. Next thing I knew, I went smashed head first into a construction truck that was parked there. Like this part of my head. You can't see now because there's hair growing back over it, but I took 56 stitches. And I was rushed to the hospital, and I slid down the side of the truck. My, there was blood. It looked like a murder scene. Like, Dexter could have analyzed it. And so, I slid down the side of that truck and I broke the antenna off sliding down and that stuck in my temple. And I had like a retainer on, you know? And that was when I first tuned into the fact I could write songs was when that antenna hit me. So, I was rushed to the hospital and I was in the hospital bed, concussion stitches in my head. My mom and dad were there and they said, Steve, what were you doing? We, we didn't fix your bike yet. We were still getting the handlebars tight. Well, why'd you ride it? And I said, I was winding my watch. You were what? Winding my watch. It needs wind. And my dad said, it's wind, you idiot. And then he looked at me and he said, man, you got to check your head. And at that moment, because I started playing guitar at the age of six, so I've been playing for 60 years now. And I looked inside my skull, and I tuned into some radio station, and I went, One day I'm going to write a song, and I'm going to call it Check Your Head. <laughs> and I'm going to sing it in a falsetto, because in the 70s, there will be Philly soul songs where they sing it in falsettos. And the other part of me was like, but it's only 1966. And I was like, yeah, but I'm time traveling right now. I'd be coming stuck in time like Billy Pilgrim and Slaughterhouse Five. And then the other me went, this is good weed, man. <laughs> and I remembered this whole moment. And I sat down and I wrote this song called Check Your Head. <laughs>
Shed your head, shed your head now, baby. 